Welcome to part two of this week's Ref Show then, Rob Staten joined by Mark Halsey and Mark Todd. Uh, you may have noticed that uh, Mr Halsey's sporting a moustache, or at least the early stages of one, because it's Movember. Movember, yes, yes. I was uh, in, uh, late, got into it with, with Monarch Airlines, that uh, you know, recognised me on the plane and said, can you redo the Movember for us? So, here I am. Looking good. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. this is, Mark, you're also I'm doing a bit of a beard, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I'm doing December beard, which is beating bowel cancer, linked in with those guys, yeah. Uh, we are talking about um, the topics of the weekend with the referees not involved in the Premier League, but one in particular uh, from the elite group, Neil Swarbrick, was given the task of refereeing uh, the League One Lancashire Hot Pot Derby between Rochdale and Wigan. Uh, Wigan on a tear at the moment. and. Uh, benefiting, Mark, from some uh, refereeing decisions in this game as well. Yeah, with my old mate Yusuf Yaskalainen in goals for, for Wigan. Um, yeah, I mean, I always found it when I got appointed, because Keith used to appoint us to the big um, derby, always a big derby, always used to get the Sheffield derby me. And I always used to think that, you know, you, you've got to perform better because everyone knows that you're a Premier League referee, so they're expecting you to be better than what, 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 you, what they normally get. So you, you, it's, it's, it's a lot of pressure on you to do these games. and. Um, yeah, I think uh, Rochdale had a, a really good um, penalty shout, um, which for me, I think, I think Neil was just must have just lost his focus, lost his concentration, and you know his recognition of that offence wasn't the, what it should be at that level. Just, just sort of, to describe the moment, then um, it's Joe Bunny who's sort of burst into the box. Mm -hmm. I mean, Joe Bunny and Max Power, the two players involved, two of the best named uh, players in the League One, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But as Max Power's just gone across. He's essentially just clipped him, taken him out. Uh, the word Stonewaller was used, Mark, which... Uh... Absolutely. And, and if you look at, if you look at, was it Max? If you look at Max, he looked straight to the referee, didn't he? Yeah. So we, yeah. we spoke earlier about yeah. players' faces tell a story and he, yeah. the, the defender looked straight at the referee and I think he was mighty relieved that he didn't well, get the Well, the referee's penalty. signal was for the player to get... I mean, he said a, the one thing for Neil Swarbrick, he's fantastically positioned to see this, but his first reaction is not to give the penalty, it's to tell... Bunny to, to get to yeah, his feet. Yeah, with him going like that, I'm surprised he, he, he's, he's thinking perhaps is this simulation. But if you're un, if you're unsure, don't go don't go looking for trouble. And then obviously you, you're cautioned in a simulation, and it shows it's a, it's a nailed on penalty. It makes it's it look even odd, worse. Yeah. It's so decision. big decision in the game as well because it was one nil at the time. Wigan won the game two nil and scored shortly after. But it, it's kind of moments like that that ultimately can change a game and decide a game. Absolutely, margins, isn't it? Uh, but um, it didn't help our cause at Sheffield United either. Uh, like you say, Wigan on a Wigan are, are, are blasting up, uh, Coventry are coming good. Um, but I say, I suppose it'll all even itself out, I'm sure it's what, you know, throughout the season, but those are, those are crucial decisions. They are. Um, players' reactions are always, always crucial, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, and the crowd's reaction as well, it's so close to, uh, so so close to that, that, uh, that particular imagine, moment. I would imagine Rochdale would be unhappy because you know obviously Premier League referee, and you'd expect a referee of Neil's calibre. It wasn't it wasn't a difficult decision to be honest. I mean, one of the things you hear, I mean, with the League One teams and and Championship as well, when a Premier League referee makes a mistake, Mark, it's kind of emphasised, isn't it? Because they want to know, hang on a minute, we've got a Premier League. He's he's come down here to come to Scotland for the afternoon, a rare occasion for him, and the big decision in the game. He essentially, they will feel that he, he got wrong, and that's why I say, you know, you, you're on a banana skin, and you've you've got to apply yourself just like you do with a Premier League game, because these guys de deserve top referees as well. And I always used to treat every game the same. And there's some referees that think, no, oh, what am I doing down there? I shouldn't be down here. He's switched off, hasn't he? Yeah, he switched he's off. Switched. I shouldn't be refereeing at this level, and you can't, you cannot do that. You cannot do that. You've got to treat every game the same as so though it's a cup final. Why, why do they do this though? Why does the football league and the why do the Premier League referees? Come and manage at that level. You know they're not used to dealing with those players. They're not perhaps haven't refereed a game involving these teams before. Why is it that? Is it just because of the the big the size of the game, the fact that it's a derby, it's a high pressure that they want to use these guys if they're not on international duty? Yeah. What happens is the football league tell tell us um, the Premier League what what games they're going to decide it's going to be that they want a Premier League referee on. So you know they they've looked at it and they think oh Rochdale Wigan's a big game. Um, you know we'll put a Put a select group referee on it, but I'd like them to see the put you know the football league put their better referees on. How are they going to get their experience? Well, we spoke earlier, didn't we, about the the progression routes and, yeah. and and pathways for really young, up and coming, developing referees putting that put into that environment. It just shows you that Neil made a mistake clearly. Um, so does that come into question that particular selection or the selection uh, process? Why, like you say, why not give your your, your emerging talent? Uh, I suppose it's similar to the demotion of you know referees who may 
bad decisions in games. And we've seen, I mean, I, I remember watching um, <coughs> Andy Haynes recently, oh, who, who had a couple of uh, big games involving the mm -hmm. two Sheffield clubs, and then was demoted and was down to, I think, a League Two game in the end and did a Northampton match because of his performances, I believe. Well, it, 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 normally, it doesn't work like that because what they normally do is that they can be refereeing in all the divisions. It's not because not he's refereeing the Championship and all of a sudden he gets a League Two game, he's doing demoted. That's not the case because you can be doing all divisions. So you could just be... It's part of your schedule. Yeah, it's part, part of your schedule. So yeah, he wouldn't right. have been demoted. He'd have just been, it was just, you know, he's been appointed to do that game. So they're not, they're not demoted as, as, as such. Um, but you do, even in the Championship, you do have to you know, pick your referees. You always, as I said, you always want your best referees. And, you know, they've got a development group of referees in, 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 within the Football League that they're looking at to go into the Premier League. Give these development guys they these, need the these chance big games. The, yeah. the, big, the big derby games. The big derbies yeah. to get their experience. Mm. Yeah, because they, they are like players, as Mark, as Mark was mentioning. There. It should be built, yeah, it should be built into their, into yeah. their development plan. Absolutely. Those types of games. Um, I say you're not going to know how they, how they react before if you don't put them in that, in that environment. Mm. So another thing uh, to talk about this week is the Udan Trophy. We saw the launch this week. Um, it's the first uh, edition of this competition this year. Seemed like a big success. Glasgow Rangers won it, of course. A lot of representation from around the world, not just in, in this country, in Britain. Um, and it sounds by the announcement so far, Mark, that it's going to be even bigger next year. Yeah, it was. I mean, obviously it was... It was the, we had the opening on, on, on last Tuesday, which was went, was, was very good. Um, and the tour, looking back at the tournament last season, it was absolutely fantastic. Or I should say, you know, back in July, saying last season, but it was absolutely fan, fantastic. And you know, other teams come to see how we organise it. And I think um, you know, we had a lot of people, you know, behind the scenes that were fantastic. I think Jenny and her team were fantastic as, as liaison officers. I think that makes a, a, a big, big thing, you know, for, for the teams to look after teams. And this year, I, mean, I don't know, we've got uh, Liverpool coming, we've got Rosenberg, we've got Man United. So I think City are on, look like they're going to come across as well. So, um, yeah, you know, looking forward to it, really looking forward to it again. And one of the things, Mark, is that it, you know, the referees get a chance to, to do some coaching and to, to get some benefit out of this. The players as well get a lot of benefit out of this because a lot gets said about youth football and academy football and it's not competitive enough that development squad football, the games are just like reserve games essentially. And this is a chance for some young players to get some proper competitive football if they go into these games with the right mind frame. Absolutely. And they're, and they're going to get used to a schedule of games, not just working Saturday to Saturday. They're going to you have to manage their minds, have to manage their performance, um, what they eat, how they rehydrate, all of those things. Superb opportunity for young players like that in, in a developing uh, um, environment. That, that's, and they don't, you don't have to apply pressure to a child at that age. They're intrinsically motivated, let's hope so, and they will manage themselves and learn how to behave and perform and try and change their peaks of, of physicality and, 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 and mentality through that, through that tournament. So it's a fantastic opportunity. The more the merrier for these, uh, for these players to, to be in that environment. And importantly, and learn how to lose and how to win, isn't it? You know, how they, you know, they lose one day, yeah. they've got to go out yeah. and, and reproduce. And that's, the, that's what we're talking about, in, you know, developing the, the, the mentality of, of young players. Is, uh, it's, it's a great opportunity and, an, and a great, um, a great um, um, elite performing uh, academies there. So you your Liverpool's, if Man City comes across, you know, you've got the Glasgow clubs coming down. Um, it's going to be, be, it'll be brilliant. And also, it depends on the refereeing skills as well because no tournament is any good without decent referees. And, we've, you know, we've got to get we had excellent, you know, in the summer with, with referees and we're getting more referees in from far afield, you know, to, to, to do the tournament. So, what, 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 so there's the coaching sessions on for the referees and just an opportunity to, to sort of cover some of these games as well. What was sort of the benefit there for the referees taking part? Mark? Yeah, I mean, obviously you've got likes of myself, Roger Dilks, Keith Hackett, uh, Glenn Turner going around watching these, um, these, these referees and offering them any advice and help we can, you know, to take on in their careers. And it's very important that we, we do have you know, top young referees that are, you know, looking to go further in the game. And as I said, in, in, in the, the tournament in, in the summer was fantastically refereed by, um, you know, we had people from, referees from Ireland, Northern Ireland, you know, local referees. And I think we're getting referees from, 
further afield for, for, for the tournament in, in, in the summer. And hopefully, Mark, maybe Sheffield United will do a little better this time. <laughs> it's also, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I didn't, to be fair, I'm a bit of a Glasgow Rangers fan as well, so I was, it tempted, Split loyal it, it tempted my loyalty. I've yeah. got to say, I am as well. I've done, I've done the semi-final <laughs> Celtic Rangers. Jock wasn't happy with me when the Glasgow Rangers won the game. <laughs> Well, the Udan Trophy will be back in 2016. Pleased to know that uh, the 2015 uh, edition was a big success. Um, next week, I believe that Alan Biggs is going to be back. Well, thanks a lot to Mark Halsey, Mark Todd uh, with us this afternoon as well. And thanks a lot for listening. We'll be back next week with The Ref Show.